I messed up big time. I sold a 45 inch print only to realize I no longer had the original file. But thankfully what I'm gonna share with you in this video saved me and hopefully if you find yourself in a similar situation, it will save you too. The other day a customer bought a print from my landscape website. So I opened my Lightroom catalog to find the edited photo just to make sure that it's print ready. But to my horror, I realized that I didn't have that file. Now I'm thinking this doesn't happen to me because I'm meticulous with my file structure, my storage, my regular backups. So I am at a complete loss. Now I will explain later how this happened, but I spent the next three hours going through 96 terabytes of data desperately trying to track down that original edit. No dice, but I did come pretty close because I took a test shot about a minute prior. The clouds were a slightly different color. It was a bit soft and grainy, but I thought it's something I can work with. So I had an idea because I obviously had the web resolution, highly compressed version that the customer had made their decision from. So I thought, why not take that into Photoshop along with this version and see if I can't match my original edit. I tried everything with layers, masks, curves, overlays, a bit of Luminar Neo, but no matter what I did, it just wasn't the same. It just felt like I was chasing something that was already gone. And then I had this crazy idea. What if I took that teeny weeny WebRes JPEG and used an AI image upscaler to create a 45 inch print version. I was completely skeptical. I thought this is just too big a ask, but I was also extremely desperate as well. So I gave it a go and to my surprise, it worked. And if you ever find yourself in a similar bind, it might just work for you too. So I'll put a link to it in the description below if you wanna check it out. But now let me show you what happened. So I opened up Gigapixel AI and browsed to the small JPEGs straight from my website. And you can tell they're straight from my website because a lot of them have the logo in the bottom right corner. Now the particular photo that the customer bought, I am not gonna demonstrate that particular one because I really don't want the customer knowing the issues I had. But let me walk you through what I did. This software is really easy to use. We have the ability to upscale at a factor of one, two, four, or six, or we can input a custom scale factor. And that's exactly what I did. My print needed to be 45 by 30 inches with a lovely pixel density of 300 pixels per inch. Now, as I scroll down here to the pier, you can see on the right hand side just how well Topaz cleans up edges and also reintroduces detail. I'm gonna bring our zoom factor into 200%, so this is really easy to see exactly what it does. So you can see just how not only pixelated this file is, but it also suffers from those larger square artifacts that you can see, which are part of the JPEG compression designed to save space in the file. Now, on the right hand side, when I release, we get to see the preview of what Gigapixel is gonna do for us. So before and after. This is an absolutely incredible transformation in my opinion. It gets rid of all of that compression for us and reintroduces pixel detail. It also gets rid of the halo sharpening effect on the edges that often appears. As you can see, as I pull this over, we get rid of that halo effect. And we can use the scroll wheel on our mouse to zoom around the frame. And if we come into the edge of the hillside here, you can really see just how nasty a lot of that compression is. When I release, you can see what Topaz is doing for us. It's such an incredible cleanup. And one of the things I really love about this AI upscaler is it's intelligent enough to know the difference between land formations and what should be put onto that land area versus the softness that should be present in the clouds. Okay, let's take a look at this photo here because there's a couple of other issues that the upscaler needs to deal with. We've got trees and we've got animals. So if we zoom into the top of the trees here, you can see on the left hand side, we have that original nasty JPEG compression. And on the right, when I release the mouse, you can see the rendered version, which Topaz is creating for us. And it's just reintroducing so much detail as if it was shot genuinely straight onto my sensor. You can't imagine what a big relief this was for me when I saw just how good this was. And I'd love to know in the comments below, have you ever had a similar hideous situation where you've lost a really important photo? It's an awful feeling. It'd be really nice to know that I'm not the only one. And if I come up to the top of the mountains here, you can see a transition between what is mountain and then going into the softness of the cloud. And the AI does a really good job of making sure that we get detail in the mountain where it should be with the snow and the rock. 
and then it just goes off into a beautiful soft transition for the sky. This was exactly what I was after and certainly not what I was expecting. Now, before you go thinking that Gigapixel is absolutely perfect, I just wanna show you some of these sheep here. Now, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Let's come over here to these guys and let's take a look at what it does. So this is our original on the left-hand side. And as I scroll this across, you can see the new interpretation and the faces, they're not perfect, but I mean, they're still pretty good, right? So even at a large 45 inch print, I still think we're gonna be able to get away with what Topaz is doing for us but it's definitely doing a better job of just the landscape elements. And thankfully the image that I was upscaling was landscape only, but I just love the way it just cleans up all the lines and adds detail back in. This software is really simple to use, but let me just give you a quick overview of the controls on the right hand side. So the main thing we want to do is make sure that our dimensions are correct. We can change that to pixels or we can change that to inches or centimeters. And you can see when I change that to pixels, that we're now dealing with a file that is over 100 megapixels from an original that was under three megapixels. If we're going to print, we want to make sure that we have a nice high pixel density and around 300 is perfect for most printers. And the next option is we can actually select a model for our upscaling. The one that I like for my landscapes is high fidelity, but we also have the ability to change to a standard model. And in this instance, it's very possible that I prefer this version. Look at that lovely detail it's reintroducing to these rocks. We also have a low res version as well. And then the bottom two are more oriented towards graphics. We have text and shape, art and CG. So choosing that option will still give you a result, but it may not be what you're after. So I'll move it back to high fidelity. And we'll come over to this side where there's a nice bit of detail and then we can look at sharpen and denoise. I'm just gonna reset both of those and also drop back fixed compression. So as you can see, even with those settings at zero, we're still getting a nice improvement over what was there at the original. So I find just a subtle boost of sharpening goes a long way and the same with denoise as well. But if we come to an area of more compression and we can navigate using this quick navigation window up here, you can see there's quite a bit of compression going on where the sky meets the land. Now, this is what you need to be careful of. As I release there, you can see that we can still see some of that compression and it's been included in the AI model and it's re-rendering. You wanna take care of that. So what you do is grab the fixed compression slider and just move that up until that compression is gone. Somewhere around that 60 point is quite nice. And then just pan around your whole photo, release and just check that it is taking care of the compression that was there. And then when you're happy with the settings, you just come to export, select your folder, select the format, JPEG, TIFF, whatever, choose your compression if you want any, but I like to keep that quality nice and high if I'm going through all of this hard work and then an appropriate color space. Now, because this is my final output and it's going to print, printers cannot handle the wide color space of Adobe RGB or Profoto. So you wanna stick with something like sRGB, hit save, and it's as simple as that. For a comparison, I'm gonna put each of these photos up on screen now where you'll be able to see the before and the after with the upscaling from Topaz, just so you can get a feel for what it can do. Topaz who makes Gigapixel AI also make another excellent image improvement program called Photo AI, which also deals with denoise and sharpening with AI algorithms. If you'd like me to cover which one you might want to go for out of the two, just write Photo AI versus Gigapixel in the description below and I will do that. But just quickly, because I own both of those bits of software, I did try this approach with Photo AI as well. And I actually found that Gigapixel, which is the less expensive of the two, actually outperformed Photo AI. If you do wanna check it out yourself, I'll put a link to it in the description below. So how did this unfortunate situation come about in the first place? Well, I have a system when I've gone out and taken some photos, I'll come back, cull them, and there's very few keepers, a lot end up in the rejects pile. Somehow this photo that I deemed not good enough and should never have seen the light of day, ended up in a folder where my wife who updates the website saw it, thought it was a print for sale and put it on there unbeknownst to me until one day somebody bought it and I no longer had that original file because it was a reject and it was gone. Oh. Lesson learned. Hopefully I don't have to use Gigapixel for this anymore. What I usually use it for is upscaling my older photos that have come from cameras with smaller sensors. It's fantastic for doing that. And the new update for upscaling facial features is incredible. 
check it out via the link in the description because they've got some uh, excellent examples on the website. And now my stress levels have returned. Now this print situation is sorted out. Why don't you join me in another video right there? I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye for now.